Welcome back, goodies. So let's get quickly started with Django, developing applications with Python and Django. Uh, you know, I hope you have practiced all the previous lectures and I reckon if you have come and jumped into this video, go and check back previous 3-4 videos uh, before we jump into this video. So I'll quickly open the visual code. Mm -hmm. right and after opening the visual code I'll go back to my project right and after I go back to my project it is better to run command prompt and run the command to start the server I already typed the command in here but I'll type it again so I will say I will go to my directory so I'll say cd django dash projects and the last time we made a project is known as CD and IID as GR. And this is the project that we are using at this moment in time. So I'll say Python manage.py run server. So I'll run the server and the server is going to start on localhost, right? And port number 8000. So I'll quickly go to port number 8000 of localhost. And so I'll say localhost post port number 8000 or you can type 127.0.0.1 and this is what we did the last time. All right, we did this so or we can type 127.0.0 so that's still and we checked these accounts and we checked URLs right and we checked how to do many many different things right. So now today what we are going to do is uh, uh, something like this so this is our login right so first we'll see how to create a template and how to pass variables and all that right uh, so we'll quickly get started today with uh, uh, you know this Django template language okay so we already included that we have uh, uh, you know used that templates folder for creating our HTML so that these uh, HTML files are directly accessible so we have login.htm now we have uh, logout and I'm going to delete actually all today. So I'm going to delete all so that we do it right from the beginning. So my templates are quite empty now. So no function is required. So my urls.py does not contain any URL. So it's going to give you also a recap of what we did. So let me have all the things and let me create all the things. So we have this models.py, we have urls.py, views.py and settings.py. So I'll just close all. I'll save, save and save. Uh, <coughs> so now I have, uh, you know, I have applications like, uh, uh, or we can say we have apps like account, home and a registration. So what I'll do um, is delete uh, these applications. So I'll say move. All right, so I'll just delete this home as well. All right, and I will have accounts being deleted as well. So now I have only templates and I have my own and I IT Srinagar SGR as a main project folder. So the first things first, so first things first is that we need to create uh, a good project right or, or a good app in order to uh, work with that app right and how do you create an app using Django all right so you know that I don't have to tell you how to create that so we'll quickly go and use the command create app right or we are going to create uh, you know a project or you could say right also whatever you can say and we are going to create templates for that as well <coughs> right uh, and uh, an application is actually required you know that application is basically going to be a module so we're going to work with different modules today all right and in order to create those modules uh, right so we need to go to the powershell right here we have two kind of powershells available all right uh, you can open as many as you want and i don't want to run my server from here so i will say start app Python manage py start app. I want to start an app. Uh, let's say about I want to start an app uh, test, right? So let's let's call this or uh, let's say login, right? So I'll create a login screen for you. So now my app login is completely ready right here. So the first things first, right? I will just mention. I'll go to the urls.py and I'll mention uh, that whenever you type slash 
login all right so whenever you type slash login just a moment so whenever you type login i mean to say root slash login you got to include a file uh, which is inside login and we call this as urls so this is the first thing that we have to do and i'll go to my templates also and create many many different chains right here the first thing that now we are going to use this login and it does not have any file so i'll click on the login and create urls.py so first things first so this is my urls.py of logins now and this is the view that we are going to create as that of the uh, login all right so i have mentioned it uh, so let's go and uh, start using so i'll say from Django, all right, dot urls, I'll say import, from Django.url import path. So there's the first thing that we have to do, import a path. And from all, I will import, because all means whatever is available here. Uh, so I'll import, I will import views. Is that clear now? So I'll declare url pattern right u r l p a w t e r n s u r l pattern is equal to because this u r l pattern is the keyword that's used in the main uh, u r l dot py right so this is the same u r l dot py that you are including that means it is going to be a list inside a list because you are including the complete u r l file here means it's going to be a list inside a list that we are creating and we know that <coughs> list is mutable right and i don't have to tell you this so let's expand and let's import we have already imported path, so I will say path. Whenever you type anything, right, <clears throat> that means all. So I'll go to views <clears throat> and I will say dot. Uh, let's say about I want to display whenever you type anything. So I want to display login. All right. So what is this login going to be? All right. It is going to be a name which is login. Right, so this is it. Now, if I run my file at this moment in time, so we don't have any accounts, we don't have any login, so we're not going to get it. Okay, so login when I go to login, it is from F R O M from not form. Right, uh, so we do not have a function login here, so it's going to create an error. Right, uh, so I immediately go to views right here and I will create a function. A login so I have to define this right so I will create a function login and take request as a parameter because it's all about HTTP request and response and I will return HTTP response so I'll say HTTP <coughs> I have imported first so I'll say from Django dot HTTP import HTTP response and i can import http request as, as well right so i'll say return http response right as http response my login page right then we will render first we will check so we'll have to check everything that we do right here so no error i'll go to login i hope everything goes fine right here <coughs> We still have an error right here, some kind of. So it's from okay. I I have this bad habit, a habit of terminating everything. I don't know why, but it's very bad habit of mine. So I do terminate everything. So okay, what if I type nothing? I go to this site, and if I type login, so I'll have to see. Uh, let's go to main urls.py so you include login.urls right so that means login is being the name of the package so this is here and you include urls so that's absolutely uh, no problem because it's running fine uh, right and uh, that's fine if i say admin so I type admin it's working fine or this is no this is server error, so we'll have to start the server because we have deleted many directories so server was shut down so we'll go back and check yeah, my login page so this time what i do right here inside the login 
page so let me go now inside templates and I will go inside the templates and I'll create a new file and let us call this as uh, login.html so now I have a file known as login.html hold this exclamatory mark and then hit enter I repeat hold the exclamatory mark like this and then hit enter so you're going to get all what is required for an html page so the title we are going to set here is my count app so for example we are going to count two numbers dynamically right here right so for example i want to count two numbers dynamically how do you count it so I'll, for that i will create form you know that uh, we have forms for example if you submit application in your college you have a form right and form has a request and it has a response. For example, you want to send your form to Delhi. What would you do? You will write the address. You will write the method that you are sending. Are you posting? Are you using courier? Are you using speed post? Right? So this is my form and my form is going to go to, for example, this count app. So this is what is fired when I run this form count. <clears throat> right? So I'll close down this form. All right inside this form i'll just use username all right or i'll say enter num1 please enter num1 so i'll use input type text all right so this is this is this is very essential here right so this input type text okay uh, so because this is what is going to hold your text and i'll say name name num one right or we can call this as txt num one and that's possible as well so i'll say enter num two input type <coughs> text name is equal to txt num two so this is the closing tag right this is the opening tag this is the closing tag right just like html has two type of tags one is separate closing if you want to enter something in the body just like uh, this uh, this is a body tag it opens here and it has separate closing tag and right here we have a title opening tag and we have a title closing tag right so this is what basically has uh, these kind of tags have separate closing tags and we have many tags like meta is here it has a separate closing tag all right uh, so in case of input type it's the self-closing tag so you'll have to self-close it and i will just type br to go to the next line i want to go to the next line break line all right and i'll say here input type so i will create uh, input type submit and i'll name it as value cal who calculate so i call this as calculate right now uh, let's see how does it look uh, okay uh, it will not look because we'll have to incorporate this template we have not so instead of returning right uh, a view login instead of giving http response what would i do i would rather give a rendered http response now how do you give http response i'll say return r e n d e r render so i'll render because i've already imported uh, render right here no, 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 no. This is basically my login app. Yeah, it's my login app. So I already imported render. So I'll render what? It takes one parameter, I'll QUEST request, and the page that you want to render. So I want to render my page known as login.html. And uh, if you want to pass any parameter right here, so you can pass. For example, I'm passing this parameter right here. Let's say T-I-T-L-E title. So I will pass this parameter title right within single quotes. So I'll pass this par parameter as a key and a value pair in a dictionary. I will say login app, right? So this is what I'm passing. Okay, if I go and see the result now, so we get this login page being rendered. Uh, and if you want to get the title right here, what you can do right here, you can go ahead and type uh, the, the, um, the exact value that uh, basically you want to type, right? So it's a dictionary, you may have to use double braces and you will say T-I-T-L-E title. So let's see whether the same title comes in or 
not okay still error what did we name it uh, so we said it is title perhaps t i t l e as a dictionary value yeah this title title has a value it's a key and it has a value when i call title i should get login app i'll again go to my login.html and say that we are using the same thing title right here but it's not coming i don't know why so let me see if i refresh we have a syntax error where okay titles we have a syntax error right here i'll just close it down okay it's coming so i'll just go and open my dictionary and i'll say tft and the title so it should come now right here we go and the title has come login app now you can clearly see login app title being displayed fine then so now i click on this calculate button so we get page not found because what we are going we're going to count so that means we have to define this count so what i do i'll not define a page right here it's not necessary that i define a page right here but it's very necessary to define a view right so i'll go and define a view because you're firing a view right here you can clearly see count so i have to define so i'll say define count so what is the view that you are finding count c o u n t count so i'll define count here because you are going to count look what is happening the moment you say slash login the first url the main url py of the application is fired right so it it's found yes slash login is found you find slash login and if you find find it you include a file known as login application urls so you go to the login applications urls.py all right uh, if you go to that urls.py you'll we'll see that without anything i mean i don't need a third segment right on the first segment i include automatically a view known as login if i go to the login view right you hold down the control key you'll go and you see you are rendering login.html and giving it back as http response so now uh, once you click on this uh, login calculate button right so when once you click on this calculate button you're going to another view slash login slash count so i have to define slash count right here and i have to define a function as well so i'll say request and i'll say return just to check uh, right so i don't have to render anything uh, right here uh, let us say i will create another file right here inside templates i call this as response.html so now we have another file known as response.html uh, so let me include this file so i'll say return render convert it to the html take request pass the current request because this is the request that you are passing right this is the request that you are taking this is incoming request that you are taking from the url this request parameter right uh, so whenever you call for slash login now you can clearly see here right uh, right you call for slash login by default kaun sa method chalta hai get method chalta hai to kya hoga whenever you call it right this login function is called why is it called because you're calling it from your urls right so whenever you say slash login include login urls.py and you directly go to views slash login right so that means you're firing this uh, view right here what is happening you're rendering now this is accepting the request all right and this is forwarding the request that you have accepted i repeat forwarding the request that you have accepted to login.html page that's why you forward the request and the request line carries this dictionary which has a title login app right so it's as simple as anything so number second is the count so this is the action yahan par right so whenever you click on this submit button right whenever the submit button is clicked right uh, entire thing whatever is inside this form is submitted as http request to this count right so what is this count we have not defined it yet let us go and define the count right here after hitting comma i'll define this count right here as easy as possible right so path is now count slash now you have to define count and you are calling a function known as count views dot count and the name is count 
All right. So now count will uh, render the response.html page, right? So we'll have to go to views and say render and pass the request to which page? R E S P O N S E response.html. And I don't want to pass anything as of now. So let's go. And I click on calculate and now you can clearly see the request has gone to another page which is count and what is count count is not returning us anything because the response page is empty right so <clears throat> i can go ahead and uh, display the response here now what is the response that you want to display i'll say hey hello so i i, I can go with h1 tag hello so i can display hello I don't want to display hello because I have to count and calculate two numbers and things clearly see I'm displaying hello here that means you click on this calculate button you display hello so that's not going to happen we intend uh, solving problems right here and to solve problems uh, what I do right here <coughs> is the following right <coughs> sorry the first thing that I do is uh, I go to my view and I try and solve the problem right here this request line contains everything which kind of request is this right which kind of request now you have not mentioned right there are two type of requests so I'll make you understand about the request <coughs> sorry HTTP request so I uh, I keep on telling this that we have get and we have post how many type of requests or we can call them as uh, you either call them as HTTP requests or call them as HTTP verbs. Verb means action, right? That's what you do. Form action, you create an action, right? So get, right? Get when the... Oh my God, I made mess of it. Okay, I'll write it down again. So get is fired when we load the application or the website for the first time and post explicitly right you don't do it by default it is fired explicitly right what is get used for use to fetch data right and this is the first thing and the second thing about get is data is appended at the end of the URL after question mark for example abc.com right question mark right ID is equal to 100 where in this uh, entire thing right if you look at this data is appended at the end of the URL right at the end of the URL after right this question mark for example we go to abc.com and we are passing an variable or a parameter known as id and it has a value 100 now after question mark anything that comes we call this as query string whatever is coming after the question mark is known as the query string right so this becomes uh, your this becomes your question and this becomes your answer or this is the name of the variable and this is the value of the variable or you can say this is the declaration and this is the definition whatever you may say all right so this is how we pass data using header all right used to fetch data right uh, when we load the website for the first time get is fire it's used to fetch the data and data is up and at the end of url like this uh, right and data is passed using data is passed <coughs> using or in the header of the apply so that is that is the most important thing uh, that the data is passed right uh, at the end of the apply in the header of data is passed in the header of the application that means whenever we use get request or the verb right uh, data is passed using the header of the HTML application right here post explicitly right uh, used that means you have to define it uh, right you, it's not used by default when you or it's not fired by default when you load the application you have to fire it yourself trigger it yourself right it is generally used to submit data right that is 
fine it's generally used to submit data to the web server right and data is passed in the body of HTML in the head header of HTML or we can say in our uh, data is passed in uh, we can say HTML header of the application of the application and here data is passed in the body of HTML application so these are the differences between get and post right and uh, yes so we have limit and here we, here we have no limit that means there's only limited amount of data that we can pass using get right but post can process large amount of data so now generally we are not writing any method that means data is appended at the end of the url now you can clearly see automatically the name of the input type text is taken right here if i go to login the name of the input type text is taken in the url the name of the input type text is taken in the url but the value has nothing now it depends on the value that i pass for example 10 and 20 is the value that i'm passing now you can say question mark right because get it's pass, passed using get txt num1 is equal to 10 and txt num2 is equal to 20 so this is what i'm passing that means what does the request have right so this form is submitted to count count is actually defined right here views dot count right uh, so what is count? A count is a function. What does it return? It returns uh, uh, response.html. Now where does the data go? Once you click on the uh, button, submit button, when you click on this submit button, the entire data is submitted to this count and this count function right here, if I go, has request and this request line contains everything that is submitted to data. For example, if I say num1, I'm declaring a variable. I will say num1 is equal to request dot. Now I will use get right here. Okay. Uh, so because I'm already using request, so I'll say request dot get. And what is the name? It is txt num1. Or you can go ahead and check the name right here. Txt num1. I'll go and use that. Whatever is in txt num1 parameter, transfer that to num1. And whatever is in txt num2, you transfer that to txt num2, right? And this is what I do. And pass to response.html. And pass to response.html a dictionary, right? And pass result, right? Or we can say res result or we can say sum is equal to num1 plus num2 right what i do here i'm adding two numbers num1 will take whatever you are passing here right whatever you are writing here will go to num1 because the name of txt here is num1 and num2 will go to txt num2 whatever you're writing here and then you take them and drop them to variables and add them and give it to this sum variable. Maybe sum is a keyword. I'll use double M, S U M M sum. <laughs> and now pass it as a result. And I can say result is going to take this sum. Now, because you're forwarding the request, this request line contains whatever request is submitted by the web server to this URL count, right? The request line say up txt num1 you take data of txt num2 and num1 from the request line and give it to num1 and num2 add them and give it to sum and forward the request why are you forwarding this request to uh, response.html because this request has everything right this has everything you know, the header of the page the ip address of the page you'll come to know that later on all right and you forward the same request to response.html. For example, whatever is here, I'm forwarding it to this. But I do forward request, but I first solve the request and then forward, right? Now, if I access this sum, let's say I need to access this sum, right? I'll just open my dictionary. I can say the sum of two numbers is and i will use summm or we have this t result now let's see whether it works or not 10 and 20 i'll go ahead we have multi-value dictionary key error yes we have this key error we need to solve this 
Mm, what is the error? R E S U L T. Is that what we're passing from the view? R E S U L T will take some and let's see. I give it to this. Alright, so let's see now. We still have an error right here. Okay, let me try it this way first. Mm, for example, we don't have a dictionary right here, so let's see. Well, we still have an error. That means the error is not here. Uh, the error is in the view, right? Mm -hmm -hmm. Maybe we are using this result right here as a single quote. Num1 plus num2, absolutely no problem. Okay, super, we have this response to, to okay, 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 we have this error right here. Uh, just let me check for the error. <laughs> you are seeing this because you are through Django. Status code. Okay. Alright, we have this error not here in the response page, uh, but in the views page, right? So this is a return render, so that's fine. So let me see where the error is first, okay? So let me see this error first. Okay, we still get an error, sum is not defined. Okay, yeah, sum is not defined, so I'm not going to send anything. Okay, let me save this, run it again. So the sum of two numbers is we're not getting anything right here. Let me do one by one and check the error. I can say, hey, wait a second. I can say num1 is equal to, all right, I can say num1 is equal to, request call the request line. And I'll say get and I'll say txt. Uh, I'll copy the parameter that's txt num1. So I can use the same here. So I'll say I need to get txt num1. Okay. And it should work without any problem now because I'm taking get. So let me get. Okay, we still have an error right here. Your dictionary object is not callable which object num1 unused variable so we don't have to do anything right here so let me get rid of this all right so we still get an error that is the problem here okay okay we have to import basically what we have to do right here uh, is we are lacking but we have already in, uh, included what you got to do here is when you start because we require the Jinja template support, all right? We haven't used that, but we'll use it later on. Uh, so we haven't used that Jinja yet. Uh, yeah, we haven't used it. So we'll be using it later on, inshallah. God. Okay. Mm, let me do it again for you. I am getting error in this get. So we already have request. unused variable so that's not a problem it's unused okay let me add a comment here and see with whether everything goes fine or yeah that's the error this is where the error is coming from that means now one is equal to request dot get yeah it is an array we have to use square braces why am i using parenthesis so i have to use square braces right here so my mistake let me try again go to login and try yeah everything is fine now yeah we have to use these square braces in single quotes so i'll say txt num1 and txt num2 num2 is equal to txt num2 okay try try it again it should not generate any error yeah no, no. we still have this thing being compiled all right so we'll have to restart the server String error is the light here, maybe. Yeah, num2 txt num2. Okay, we have to use the base here. 
and we have used the inverted comma. I'll go to login, right? Uh, we don't have any error, we have two warnings. Yeah, we have two warnings that we have not used it yet. So I'll just change and start the server. Right, at times the server crashes, so you'll have to restart. Now I click on calculate multi-value dictionary key error. Uh, we'll go and see num1 is equal to request.get txt num1 and num2 is equal to basically txt request.get txt num2. Where is the error now? We don't have any error. What if I enclose it within a string? <coughs> All right, so there is no problem. I said num2 is equal to request.gettxt, num2. I'll go back to my login, save this, type a value. So I'll say 10, 20, hit enter. We still have multi-value dictionary key error at login count. What is multi-value TX, text num2? Okay, we don't have txt num2. Look what we have done. T E X T text. No, it is T X T num2. My god, I found it finally. T X T num1, T X T num2. So this was the error. We had misspelled it right here. Mm, okay, now everything should work fine. So we don't have a problem right here. Look, go back. Hit enter. Yeah, everything is working fine. Uh, now I will say S U M sum is equal to num1 or num1 plus num2 and this is done and I'll pass this as a dictionary value which is R-E-S-U-L-T result as S-U-M-M sum, right? And I'll go to response now and use the sum of two numbers is, and then I'll display this result, right? That uses the sum of two numbers is, we're not displaying anything so let's go ahead 10 and 20. The sum of two numbers is 10 plus 20 which is 10 20 right 10 and 20 you know if you know operator overloading if you know polymorphism this plus arithmetic operator has the power to be used to add two numbers and to concatenate two numbers right so at this time what is happening num1 anything so I'll, I'll write it down here so I'll say note so I have to note this, so right, input taken in any language, right, irrespective of the language being web or client or anything. The value of any input taken in any language, right, is taken implicitly as String. That means the it's taken as string, right? Any input in any language, right? Whenever you take input in any language, it's always taken as string. Now what do you do? Right? You implicitly it is string and you have to explicitly convert it to integer. That is why this plus x whenever we say H E L L O hello plus world, so it becomes hello world. Alright? So now if I do 10 plus 20 right it becomes 10 20 why because it's taken as string that's why we're getting 10 20 and in order to solve that we already know those who have learned python already know this thing that they have to go ahead and right so they have to go ahead and convert it to int implicitly explicitly so i'll say int and whatever input now we are taking is taken, being converted and being passed to int, then going to num1. Now num1 is int, num2 is int. Depending on the type of this variable, whatever is happening in right hand side, right, will go to left hand side. Now sum also becomes int. Now let us see what are we getting. So I'll say 10 plus 20, the sum of two numbers now is 30. Is that clear? Now what if I do not want to display it as post? I want to dis I don't want to display it as get, right? Uh, had it been login, right? If it is login, how would you solve this, right? For example, if I say uh, I don't want to save this as get, I don't want to pass URL in the header but in the body, 
All right, well, I do right here. I'll go to login.stm and I'll say action. Not action, but method and I'll use post. By default, get is fired. Now I am using post. That means nothing is going to be uh, available. Nothing is going to be uh, taken over the URL. So now I'll say count. Now runtime error login. Okay. You call this URL via post, but the URL doesn't end in a slash and you have appended slash set. Django cannot redirect to the slash URL while maintaining post data. Right? So that is here what we have to understand. Now, even if I pass it like this, it's not going to happen. All right. So even if I go to count and then I use slash. All right. Why? We have a problem right here. Uh, because you are taking request.get, I'll have to change it to request.post, request.post. And now we can see that the multi-valued error will be solved. Now, post variable has to come. Uh, I'll say 20 and I'll say 20. Now you can say runtime error. So I'll go to my you login and I'll say that the method is count slash post but count slash okay let's go to login and say 10 and say 20 so you get forbidden that this kind of act is forbidden because the csrf token is missing so this is this is where python is very important django has that csrf which is cross site request forgery uh, you know uh, sort of a thing right it's basically there it protects you against unwanted access right so now what you got to do if you want to have post right there is where we have to understand using views.py completely right now if you want to take uh, the request method as post so there are certain things that you want to deal in all right uh, so what time is it we already have passed the time so tomorrow will be the next lecture because tomorrow is saturday uh, so we'll be sharing next lecture tomorrow in order to give you off that means Sundays would be off so I'll not go too deep here but you have to go till get and complete everything till get right so get method has to be completed and learned and post method eventually has to be completed and learned by you and we will be inshallah inshallah learning quite basic things and Saturday's class will be most important, most and most important. We will go too deep into why do we use square braces, why not curly braces, or why do we not use uh, parentheses right here, what is this? And we will go deep and learn theoretical about the get and the post verb or HTTP uh, request method and then try and generate a very specific response, right? For that, I need you to practice it till tomorrow. I'll share it, say about somewhere around three to four, I'll be eager to share it inshallah inshallah god willingly right i wish you all the best right and uh, practice hard do let me know if i can help you message me and do not let on tomorrow what you can do today tomorrow is going to be a new topic sunday is going to be inshallah off i wish you all the best bye bye